Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9 The Bigger Picture. Our investigation exposing the possible health risks of those curly fluorescent light bulbs touched a nerve. We were overwhelmed with viewer calls and emails telling us these bulbs were making you sick. We demanded answers from Health Canada and tonight a 16 by 9 exclusive. Finally, their test results. And if you have these light bulbs anywhere in your home, you'll want to hear this story. Here's our Alison Vushnik. It's hard to imagine that a light bulb can make you sick, but then you meet the people who say it has. Everything in my body was out of whack. Nauseous and some dizzy spells. Achy joints, pain. Just a soreness. Dizziness. My vision was starting to get blurry. Anxiety. Dull pain behind my eyes. There was something about those bulbs that triggered my headache. Different symptoms, but they all say it was these. Energy-saving, compact fluorescent light bulbs causing them problems. Really red, itchy, weeping pustules. It was really not very pleasant to look at. And this hand, um, the base of the thumb was like an opened wound. And when they removed them? It stopped. It all stopped. And I immediately started getting better. It took a few days before the dizziness and everything subsided, but it all started to heal. It was so dramatic and it was so quick. The other symptoms were gone in a matter of days. So you can imagine how confused they were, told to use the bulbs to help save the planet, but then feeling unwell. So we investigated. For close to two years, we've been speaking to experts around the world and often getting very few answers here at home from Health Canada. They should have done the testing prior to releasing the product and now they're doing a catch up. As we continued to demand answers, Health Canada finally decided to test the bulbs and now has results and recommendations. But you won't find it on Health Canada's website. You have to find it here on Natural Resources Canada's website. The two departments teamed up. So what did they investigate? Two things, ultraviolet radiation, UV, and electromagnetic emissions. And what did they find? With UV, Health Canada says if you are close only three centimeters away to an exposed coil CFL, you would reach daily UV exposure in 50 minutes. And in 3.3 hours, skin reddening can occur. So we spoke with dermatologist Dr. Jensen Young from Women's College Hospital in Toronto to find out in terms of the sun and UV, what does skin reddening and maximum daily UV exposure mean? Daily UV exposure means that after a certain point, you'll get a sunburn from it. Skin reddening is, is basically the same as getting some redness from sun exposure. Health Canada concluded the CFLs are safe, but they also issued a warning. To avoid any long-term health effects in the general population, you need to be at least 30 centimeters away from a bulb. Confusing? We thought so, so we asked Health Canada for an on-camera interview. They refused. In fact, over the two years we've been requesting interviews, they've only done one. As for the manufacturers, all the companies contacted declined our request for an interview. Their industry association released this statement. We are pleased but not surprised that the report affirmed our industry's products are safe and do not pose a health hazard. So Health Canada says, keep your distance. 30 centimeters or more. That's the length of an average ruler. But that new information is not here on their website's Safety of CFLs page. It doesn't say anywhere to keep 30 centimeters away. Dr. Cheryl Rosen is the head of dermatology at Toronto Western Hospital. She wonders about long-term exposure. It depends on the strength of the UV. If it's very minimal and it takes five hours for any sort of you know, effect to occur, then that's a very low dose. Now, granted, it's all, it will all add up, especially if you're sitting by that bulb every single day, 365 days a year, let's say. But I would have to say from a scientific point of view, I haven't studied the effects of bulbs on the skin on a chronic basis. I think that that's, that's what we have to learn about here. So we shared the results with people who claim they've had problems. People like Jane Penteluk, who spent hours doing crafts quite close to her lamp. I wish it had been on from the beginning. The top of my head, my face, much of the time was much closer than 30 centimeters. And Charlene Creelman thinks 30 centimeters isn't enough. I'm really disappointed. Really disappointed. 
All this came about because the Canadian government is phasing out energy inefficient bulbs like incandescents. By 2012, they're banned. So sales of CFLs have skyrocketed. It should be less than 50, ideally. Professor Magda Havis is a leading expert and has been testing the CFL bulbs for years. You shouldn't have any light bulb that uh, you have to stay a certain distance away from it because otherwise it's not healthy. And there are some people, extreme examples like Brenda Ryder who has lupus. Brenda says it only took 20 minutes being next to the light bulb for her face to look like this. Health Canada did tell us that people who have lupus, other autoimmune disorders or skin sensitivities may have issues with the bulbs. No one really advised me or even uh, I think particularly believed me. There are no recommendations on the packaging for the bulbs about distance or for people with skin sensitivities. UK health officials were among the first to test the CFL bulbs for UV levels in 2008. It wasn't related to the brand or where we bought them. It was a random, uh, a random sample of them, about one in five, were emitting unusual levels of UV light. When we interviewed them in London, they recommended sitting more than 30 centimetres away and also limiting the time. People should uh, be aware of this and avoid being in close contact with them uh, for, for more than an hour. And they think there should be more research done. If we're going to have these devices, there should be proper standards for them. The British scientists also suggest, in terms of UV, using these bulbs with the curly part inside a cover. You can buy these bulbs in Canada as well. Health Canada's tests of these covered double envelope bulbs show they also emit UV, but at lower levels than the open curly bulb, and at a very similar level to an incandescent bulb. And there's more. Health Canada also tested for electromagnetic emissions, basically what the bulbs give off and so did Swiss health officials. Here you have the induced fields in the... But the Swiss claim their technique is way more accurate and Canada's test is old school. We'll never give you the final answer about the exposure. Still to come on 16 by 9. You have stimulation of nerves, muscles, which can be, in extreme cases, can be painful. That's all coming up. Welcome back to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. So Health Canada says keeping a distance from compact fluorescent bulbs will keep you safe from ultraviolet rays. But what about other things they tested for? Emissions and dirty power. They claim levels are safe, but 16 by 9 uncovers new research that sheds light on the safety of these bulbs. Here again is our Alison Vushnik. At this lab in Geneva, Switzerland, they say they're conducting the most extensive testing ever done on compact fluorescent light bulbs. They're measuring electromagnetic fields, or emissions that the bulbs give off. It's the emissions from the compact fluorescent light bulbs that some Canadians say are making them sick. Dr. Mark Douglas, who's actually Canadian, is part of the Swiss research team. We measured the fields in air without a person there and then we measured the fields with a, a simulated person there. The Swiss government asked them to develop this new method after they felt the original method for testing was inconclusive. Instead of just measuring the CFL emissions in the air, they also measured what the emissions could do to the human body. And that's radically different, they say. If the currents flowing through the body are high enough, you have stimulation of nerves, muscles, um, which can be, in extreme cases, can be painful, can, can you know, cause problems. This shows you the distribution of the electric field, and you can see that it changes once you put a person very close to these fields. We asked Dr. Magda Havis, an expert, about what the possible effects could be. 
Well, anything that stimulates your nerves is obviously going to affect your entire neurological system. Um, and the effects will vary from person to person depending on how sensitive they are to the stimulation. Some people can feel it, some people become ill as soon as a compact fluorescent light bulb is turned on, and some people aren't sensitive to this and they can't feel anything. There are international limits set for electromagnetic emissions. So how did the bulbs stack up? The Swiss say they all passed, but some were very close to failing. In all cases that we looked at, the exposure was below the safety limit as defined in international standards. However, in, the, in some cases, the, um, the levels were not uh, extremely below the safety levels. So, in other words, we can't say that intrinsically that these uh, light bulb sources would, it would be um, below the safety limits. Yeah, you can see how you have here in the spinal core, you have the highest current. Dr. Highest Niels Kuster, director of the Swiss lab, says yes, that means they met international guidelines, but some not by much, so more needs to be done. Which gives an indication that they should actually be tested before marketing. In the end, after all their research, Swiss health officials have precautions for consumers. They think the electromagnetic fields could pose a health problem, so they want users to maintain a gap from the bulbs. But Health Canada, who also tested for electromagnetic emissions, says this should not be an issue of health concern. Not so, says Kuster. He says the test Health Canada used is inadequate. It uses the, the old technique as everybody used to measure the fields in air, which will never give you the final answer about the exposure. And Magda agrees. The Swiss study is showing that uh, you can't simply measure these light bulbs as though no one's uh, present because as you approach the light bulb, uh, the electric field actually couples onto your body and that needs to be part of the measuring protocol as well. We wanted to speak with Health Canada about their tests and results, but they refused to appear on camera. According to their report, CFL emissions are below Canada's and international limits, so do not pose a health hazard. The companies we contacted that manufacture the bulbs declined to be interviewed. In an email, their lighting association also says that their products are safe and do not pose a health hazard. We feel that this issue has been fully and comprehensively dealt with by Health Canada, with access to complete and proper testing processes. But Magda disagrees not with Health Canada's testing, but with the international standard they measure against. Our conclusions are that those levels are too high and that's why people are becoming ill, that's why they're reacting to the compact fluorescent light bulbs. The other issue with CFLs is mercury. Each bulb contains a tiny amount to make the bulb work. When you want to throw them out, they can't go in your household garbage. Instead, must go to a special facility like this one for recycling. So the incandescent bulbs are being phased out. In 2012, Canadians will have to use something more energy efficient. And companies are spending millions to create more options. One of the areas of huge growth is in LEDs, light-emitting diodes. LEDs are able to convert electricity directly into light. Subi Al-Sayed is an engineer with a specialty in sustainability. Today, this light bulb here, it's a straightforward replacement to the old incandescent light bulb. And looking at the energy consumption of both, this one consumes 60 watts of electricity as opposed to 7 watts of electricity. So it's a very significant reduction in energy consumption. LED light bulbs are entering the marketplace. They are expensive, but can last up to 20 years and are way more efficient than CFLs and incandescents. And some people are having difficulty giving up old-fashioned incandescents. In the European Union, they are already phasing out incandescents, banning one bulb at a time. In September, the first bulb to go was the 100 watt, even though it was just one option. In Germany, that led to a rush to buy them and empty shelves with some shoppers stockpiling. The sales on our 100 watts, as you can see here, are pretty good. This is not uh, that we don't um, want to sell it to our customers. This is because of the manufacturers can't deliver them right now. Um, our sales are up, up to 600% uh, on this special 100 uh, watt light bulb. So after all this, the massive push to use CFLs and conflicting messages from various governments, there are people who feel left in the dark about UV and electromagnetic emissions. 
like anyone, disappointed. Because I think when a new product is put out on the market, it should be properly tested. I'd never have those bulbs again. I'm afraid of them. 